younger players in, bring some of those freshmen in that you're going to need during the course of the, team, of the conference season. Give them an opportunity to get into a rhythm, get some valuable minutes here, and continue to coach your basketball team, even though you're in a blowout game. It's a very unusual schedule for Colorado. There's Chen scores that we mentioned before the tip that the Buffaloes haven't played in nine days, and after this game, they have another six or seven game break. Six or seven day break, I should say. So that's a long period of time with not a lot of competition. Well, it, it certainly is. I think they're going to have eight days off, one game in eight days here. So, And plus, they're going to Christmas break and they're coming back. So the good thing is you're well rested. You get players to have any. I know Dinwiddie has the bad ankle and things. You can get completely healed. But you can get in the gym now and fine-tune your basketball team. Clean up the little things offensively. Clean up the little things defensively. Work on individual improvement with players in that. And then hopefully they'll come back with the hunger that they got fresh legs, fresh mind, and coming in the conference play. Andre Robertson again. What an unselfish play by Robertson and all game long. One play after another by this entire Colorado team sharing the basketball. Chen with another basket in the lead is 55 to 15 inside of 145 remaining in the opening half. Be sure and stay with us at the break for the State Farm halftime report. Knocked down out of the corner. Three pointer made. Selden Hughes, Luis Flores knocking that shot down, number 23 in blue. Paul, I've always said the mark of a good basketball team if you're in a ball game and you have a team that's not playing well and you're a superior team and you're supposed to beat them by 20 25 and you do do that that tells you something right there that you're on your game and if you're struggling with a team that you should blow out then i would be worried but right now this colorado team is just kind of clicking you can see where the the layoff has actually helped them because they're a lot more sharper they're fresher legs they're focused and you can get them to play this well going to break Christmas break, that's a very good sign with your basketball team. Bornick thought about it into the corner now to Saldivall. That was Sabatino Chin, six point down at the other end. And he scored the last half dozen for the Buffaloes. Easy rebound taken by Robertson. I worry more about Northern Arizona because they need the battle tough again. You got to tough conference schedule coming up. You need to get a little bit more fire in your game right now. Good attack of the basket that time by Chin, but an offensive foul is called. Take another look. Another one of those great crossovers. Defensively, outside the circle, the feet are set. Nice opportunity there by Max Jacobson to take the charge. Inside of 30 seconds remaining, and remind you to stay tuned at the break. The State Farm Halftime Report coming up. In just a short period of time, again, it has been all Colorado in this first half. Out of the corner, Flores once again. So back-to-back three-pointers, and Flores coming off the bench to give Northern Arizona a little bit of life. Flores is a smart academic student, a biomedical science with a minor in chemistry. And at the buzzer, out of the deep corner, one of the rare misses. conference play that's a very good sign for this Colorado team and only 11 games into his junior season had not been much talk about him possibly coming out so I think he's going to be a four-year college player and most of the starters are now to the sideline and a critical juncture believe it or not for Colorado because Tad Boyle told us he says we got to develop some real confidence and continuity in our bench and this group of uh, the second unit going to be on the floor now probably for the final 11 minutes how about Northern Arizona that time went to the full court press then dropped back to the 2-3 zone so again Jack Murphy is working on some things that they're going to need even though in a blowout game you can get better and work on some things so you're better the next game this game is out of reach but certainly there's some things they need to fine tune that they can continue to work on Saldivar trying to split the double team and the common foul is called against Colorado. Be sure and stay tuned. More Pac-12 basketball coming up. Regional coverage, 7.30 p.m. Pacific, Cal State, Northridge at Utah. Buffalo at Washington State. Check Pac-12.com for programming in your area. With Ernie Ken, I'm Paul Sunderland. Ernie, you're headed over to Las Vegas. Have a good time. Basketball game over there featuring Oregon State. I'll be headed back to Los Angeles and get a look at the UCLA Bruins against a pretty feisty Fresno State team. 
Gave Colorado everything they wanted a couple of nights ago. And here is Flores once again, knocking down shots out of the corner. And, you know, player like Flores, he's now three for three from long range for Northern Arizona. He's earned himself some playing time. Well, more importantly, they're 5 of 23 right now from the three-point line. Do you realize the Denver Nuggets were 0 for 22 in a ball game? I've never seen that in an NBA game. Well, it was an NBA record, so it had never happened before. And let's hope it never happens again. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Carl is saying the same thing. Stanford oh. up on Northwestern right now, 32-29 with about two minutes to go in the half. That is a big game going on for the Pac-12 Conference because they took a little bit of a hit with Oregon's loss to a uh, UTEP team that was 4-5, and five, losing to them on the road. The conference RPI slip, I think the schedule kind of slip, is very important that they continue to manage and close out this preseason because there's not going to be a lot of opportunities when the conference play starts if you don't have teams that are ranked somewhere 30, 35 and up. Who do you have a chance to beat to move up to strengthen your RPI? And in fact, you can lose the teams on the bottom half of the conference and go down with your RPI and strengthen the schedule in the conference race. Stalin Saldivar with a basket for Northern Arizona at the other end. 9.45 remaining. Second unit, as mentioned, on the Xavier Talton missed that offensive rebound taken by the big Australian Harris Tunks. And at 6'11", 250 pounds. He's battling down inside. Let's set the lineup for you. Eli Stalzer on the floor now. Along with Harris Tunks. Talton to inbound with a fresh shot clock and uh, some contact down inside. The officials making sure that everybody is clear headed and ready to go. And, you know, we talked about Josh Scott tonight. What a fantastic freshman he is. But Eli Stalter, Xavier Talton, Xavier Johnson. How about those freshmen? And you got another good one that's sitting out in the dressing room is your Chris Jenkins from Detroit, Michigan. This is a very talented Colorado team, young group of players, ranked 22 by some magazines in the country. And Colorado has said it might be the best, the best incoming class they've ever had here at Colorado. So again, their future is so bright, you have to wear shades. <laughs> well, you know, that's interesting because the Skia Booker comes in, same class as Spencer Dinwiddie. They're both sophomores. That had to be considered a pretty good class as well, give you an idea how uh, Tad Boyle has really got it rolling here in Boulder. I love Johnson, the way he gets down to the defensive stance. He's long, he's athletic. Again, they not only uh, they have great looking athletes, but they got good basketball IQ. Stalzer dug that out, an errant pass by Xavier Colton, and off into the corner. This is Jeremy Adams, number 31 in white. Stalzer and Johnson now with the basketball went to the same high school that was modern day, just south of Los Angeles. One of the finest programs over the last 20, maybe 25 years in all of high school basketball around the country. Coach Gary McKnight, probably one of the top five high school players to ever coach the game in terms of the success. I had a player out of here by the name of Cameron Sufi that played for me at St. Mary's. He was the smartest point guard, and I would put him up there in terms of Ridnow, in terms of his intelligence. He was one of the smartest point guards I've ever coached. He had an ability to run your system, and when you talk about building a team, some people talk about getting the big guy, or do you get the point guard? Right. You get the point guard. Because when you talk about the number of games that come down to the last two minutes, you've got to have a coach on the floor that understands the game, and he was one of the smartest players that I've ever had the opportunity to coach. Free throw shooting continuing to be a bit of a problem for Colorado. They were 0 for 6 to start the game. Ben Mills, seven-footer out of Heartland, Wisconsin, coming on for the first time. Again, if you're just joining us, Colorado got out to a 22 to 8 lead. Askia Booker went 4 for 4 to start things off for the Buffaloes, led 42 to 13. This game was over after about the first 10 minutes. Northern Arizona coming in at 4 and 6, a number of very, very good looks, just could not make a shot. Well, the, the thing that I'll say about Northern Arizona, they continue to run their offense. And again, this is a new system, new team, new coach. So it's going to take them some time to get it together. But they played much better in the second half. So obviously they've responded coming out of the break. Basketball or Houston Baptist 
at the Oregon uh, Ducks. And then we roll on Prairie View at California, Northern Illinois at Washington. And we're not done yet. A doubleheader nightcap starts in Las Vegas. Ernie Kent will be there. The San Diego Toreros taking on Oregon State at 6 p.m. That'll be the site of the Pac-12 tournament, the MGM Grand Garden. Then at 8 p.m., Fresno State at UCLA. And can you say a full day of basketball? What are your thoughts on moving the Pac-12 tournament over to Las Vegas? I think it's an excellent idea. Larry Scott, commissioner of the Pac-12 Conference. I, I love the way he thinks big picture, thinks outside the box and everything else because the conference needed something in terms of the tournament because when UCLA, USC were not there, your numbers just weren't there. Here's an opportunity now for fans from Washington, Washington State, Oregon, Oregon State. Everybody can come to Las Vegas. You can have obviously have a good time in Las Vegas, but you can see some outstanding basketball. It's one of several conference tournaments that are going to be going on in Las Vegas, but I think it's a great idea. I think it's an opportunity for players to have more fans at the game, and if one thing the players like at the end of the year is to see people come out to support them and feel like they're in March Madness before you get there, and certainly your conference tournaments have an opportunity to do that. Battle for the rebound down inside, taken by Northern Arizona. The Lumberjacks uh, have already played a couple of conference games. They're coming off a loss to Montana at home. Earlier in the week, they defeated Montana State. They play out of the big sky. They were just 5-24 and 24 last year. And Xavier Johnson, once again, all the credentials to have a superb career here. When you talk about a young man with the ability to play three different positions, he can play the three, which puts him out on the perimeter and shoot the threes, and skilled enough to put it down and get to the lane and make basketball plays. He can play the four where he can post you up and then step outside and do things in the pick and pop. And he can play the five where you just leave him in the block and let him be a post-up player, go rebound the basketball. A lot of versatility in his game. I even think eventually he's going to be able to play the two. If he's going to be able to shoot it, he can be a big guard to give you a big lineup on the floor with that great incoming class. Colorado going to improve to eight and two. I'll give you the numbers as Jeremy Adams scores easily at the other end. And, excuse me, improved to 9-2, and two, and that would give them their best start since 94-95. They have certainly looked every bit as one of the top one, two, three programs in this conference this afternoon. And, you know, they struggled a little bit on the road with Wyoming in that environment. I think it was the sixth time they've lost to Wyoming. They struggled against a very good and vastly improving Kansas team that could have done a lot of teams the same way because they're playing so well. So there was some concern about going on the road in those types of environment and how they responded. But if you can learn from it, grow from it, knowing that you didn't play hard enough, tough enough, whatever, then okay, they become good losses that can make you a better basketball team. And certainly they're going to need toughness and that tough mentality when they open up with conference play on the road at Arizona and a much improved Arizona State with Jahi Carson, Big Jordan Patinsky, Carrick Felix. Those guys are very, very good with the way they play. They got a much more potent offense attack. They get up and down the floor and play in transition. Jahi Carson is one of the quickest players in the country, and he is unbelievable out the bounce of getting in the lane and not even getting in the lane, but finishing. He can take the hit and still finish at the hole. You made a great point earlier in the game about, and it, I think of it with respect to Jahi Carson, because you talked about in the context of the young guards, Jacobson with a score down inside, the young guards at Oregon. You know, Carson's going to get a lot of attention. Coaches are going to game plan for him. They're going to take the ball out of his hands. So how will the younger players in the league in the second half of conference play, how will they grow up? How will they be tough enough mentally to deal with all that game planning that comes their way? Remember, Johnny Carson was on the squad last year. He just didn't play. So he understands walkthroughs. He understands the different environments. He understands the pressure of it all. He's just performing in it now. When you talk about Dominic Artis, uh, those uh, Damian Dotson, those players, hey, this is the first time they've experienced conference play. So it's going to be a little bit more of an adjustment for them. And every freshman that I've ever coached, they all hit the wall at about January. It's just the nature of the beast. And then as you get to the middle of February or so, they start to climb over that wall and they get going again. So there's going to be a lull in the season for those freshmen, unless, of course, it was one of the great ones out there, those one and done. They don't ever hit a wall, but most freshmen do hit that freshman wall. Good look down inside. Easy basket for Ben Mills. Obviously a seldom used, but very much a crowd favorite. 
And also young players, confidence ebbs and flows so quickly by the possession, by the game. And as you say, when the player hits the wall and their game goes south for a little bit of time, will they get their confidence back? Well, I'm going to give you another one. You say by the game, by the shot, by the practice, by the parent phone call, too, it changes the country. In this day and age, with that instant gratification and they want it now, these kids are not as patient as they were in the old days. And, of course, you and I played for a great one and Dick Harder. Your parent didn't call Dick no, Harder. No. And if I were to call home and complain to my dad, the first thing he would do would hang up the phone. He said, you figure it out. Nowadays, it is different. It is really different to where a player go to the parents. When you talk about over 400-plus transfers at the Division One level, that tells you how much kids want instant gratification. They want it now. Every freshman, hear me, Mom and Dad. Every freshman is going to struggle. New academics, new social, new environment, new system, new defense, new offense. They are going to struggle. They're not going to be the stars right out of the gate. It's going to take them some time. The best thing you can do as a parent is to support them, level, and let them figure out some of the stuff on their own. That just doesn't seem to happen so often these days. Sal DeVar with a basket at the other end. Inside of three minutes, it has been all Colorado. Don't forget more basketball coming up when this one is done. Either Cal State, Northridge at Utah, or Buffalo at Washington State. Haven't talked a lot about that team in Pullman. That is a tough out. Brock Moten is a very, very good player. And when we come back on the other side of this timeout, we'll talk about Washington State, the Cougars, and some of the other teams in the Pac-12 Conference. So 2.45 left in this one, and then both Northern Arizona and Colorado will get a relatively extended break uh, after Christmas. Xavier Johnson has been very impressive. Strength inside, right in the face of the defender. And then just moments ago, we saw him drain one from three-point range. Uh, that's what I tell you. The versatility of his game gives him an opportunity to play multiple positions. And when you talk about having depth, you can have depth with small numbers because you've got players who can move them all over the floor and play them in different areas. He's one of those players that can put it down on the floor and get to the hole and finish. He takes charge of the defensive end of the floor, and he knocks down the three. Looks like they're going to get him on the block on that because he was inside the circle. In the restricted area when Jacobson, there wearing number 33 in blue, had got to have a place to land. I gave you a mouthful before about parents and parenting your kids and everything else. And the bottom line to what I was saying about young people, giving them an opportunity to deal with all that newness when they come to college. Before you jump in as a parent like you would do in grade school because the teacher didn't give them the A, like you did when they were playing volleyball or soccer because they weren't getting all the minutes, your son needs to be the star. Let them go and watch them grow. That's what you need to do because with young people, you've got to give them the opportunity to figure things out because those are life lessons. In corporate America, you're not going to be sitting next